Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Your Wednesday, uh, uh, May 9th, I believe. <laughs> yeah, it's May 9th. We are here live on Channel 189 here on MCAT, Missoula's Community Media Resources. Um, that we're going to here to talk about a bunch of um, MCAT news, Missoula news, state news, um, United States news. Um, but first, the biggest news that's happening is the weather is that we have a flood warning happening till Friday at 10:45 a.m. Chances of rain uh, today with uh, high showers ch uh, likely happening tonight. You're going to have a c it seems like we're going to have a couple of those flash rains that we've been seeing the last couple of days. Um, you have a 32 uh, jump to 70 percent. Tonight's going to be 90 percent, but then it's going to jump down back down to 20 percent. And then it's going to start being more regular uh, rain happening for your Thursday and Friday. But yeah, and then of course the flood warning, just letting you guys know it's going to be happening all week long with uh, highs into the 60s and lows into the 40s, um, pretty much happening most of this week. I'll have your update this Friday because there might be another flood warning happening this weekend as well, judging by how much uh, rain and um, uh, precipitation will be, be getting this week as well. But um, changing the subject for uh, half a second, in local news, the MCPS levy, which amounts to about $305,000, passed with 4,959 votes, or 57.7% of uh, Missoula County voted for this. The cost of the high school levy on a uh, 200,000 assessment property is an increase of $2.25 a month. Um, Superintendent Mark Thane said every, um, elementary school enrollment has increased by 610 students, or 12% since 2011. That increase calls for more resources, and the district hopes to hire five additional teaching staff to adjust to the rising enrollment. So far, Missoula has uh, passed every levy set forward by the school district. Of course, let's go back to flooding. Uh, flooding has prompted mandatory evacuation in the Orchard Homes area, according to a Missoulian article that was released. Off of Reserve, west from 3rd Street towards the river, a billboard is being surrounded by water. Uh, the Missoula County Sheriff's Office issued mandatory evacuation notices for housing in the Orchard Homes area Tuesday afternoon. 2,000 homes are at risk due to flooding, with around 800 of those located in Orchard Homes. Uh, the areas under evacuation includes all residents on Tower uh, I mean includes all residents on Tower Street to the north of Third Street, uh, Kill, uh, Kerwald, Channel Drive, Nancy Lou, Keck Street, and Stone Street to the north of the intersection with Flamingo Drive. All homes in the Schmidt Road and the road ca called Off Mallen Road are also under evacuation order. Roadblocks were set up on Tower Street. Uh, of course, Mel Holtz with the Southwest in Incident Management team said that any residents in the area who uh, see the waters rising near their home should leave immediately. An emergency shelter is being set up at Christ the King Church, which is 1400 Gerald Avenue in Missoula. For more, for she, for, for more information, you can call 258-INFO, otherwise known as 258 46 Three six again. That number is two five eight four six three six. If you live um, in the Orchard Homes area or live near the Orchard Homes area, please call this number to ask about um, any kind of evacuation that you may need to do. Um, in state news, Montana Tech of the University of Montana will now be called Montana, Montana Technical University. It was known as the Montana State School of Mines from 1900 to about um, 1965 when it became known as Montana College of Mineral Science and Technology. In 1994, the name was changed again to Montana Tech of the University of Montana. The idea of choosing a new institution name was first broached last spring. Uh, in an article by Helena Independent Report, soon after the uh, Board of Regents designated the school a special focus for your university, uh, what has always been kind of like a two-year college that looks into engineering launchpad for folks looking into getting minor degrees and specializing in cer certificate gettings. Uh, Montana Tech Administration has formed a wire. Um, Work Group for Institutional Realignment for Excellence Committee to help many navigate the, cha uh, the changes that might result in a new designation. Since then, WIRE has spent the last year looking for everything from student recruitment to faculty salaries to the degree being offered to department organization, all in an effort to find ways to enhance how the university um, is arranged and focused. Um, 
There are some liberal-based educations offered at the school, but the new uh, name shouldn't deter people from getting the same education centers that Montana has offered since 1900. The Board of Regents approves, uh, will uh, look to approve this recommendation. It will mark the school's third name change in its 118-year history. Um, so it's going to be discussed by the Board of Regents. Um, so all they have to do is approve it to move forward on this. The Farm Bill has been one of those controversial things that have prompted many farmers in the nation to vote in favor of a Republican majority, but with recent turns in support, uh, corporations and less on farmers in the Farm Bill. But of course, now the Farm Bill is looking more into helping people in terms of um, cheaper health insurance um, than plans offered through the Affordable Care Act. The, Afford uh, the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare, uh, was threatened by the GOP when they decided to be like, okay, we're going to have the American Health Care Act, and then we're going to either repeal and replace. So one of the things that they did was the farmers, um, within the farmers bill, they're going to have some kind of minor health insurance within there as well, which also, in many um, other people's perspectives, is a threat would, would be a threat to the Affordable Care Act in through the farm bill so in a call for a 65 million dollar in loans and grants administered by the department of agriculture to help organizations establish agriculture related politi uh, policies modeled on association health plans the national association of insurance commissioners for example has warned that the association uh, plans threaten the st stability of a small group market and provide inadequate quit benefits and insufficient protection to customers. Although GOP ger uh, generally uh, supports association plans, using taxpayers' funds to help start them um, could prove problematic for some con uh, conservation um, um, conservatives in Congress. Sorry about that. Um, many Republican lawmakers have expressed concern that the use of tens of millions of taxpayers' dollars to start insurance co-ops that were part of the ACA, most of them failed. But of course, for the full article, you can go on to npr.org. And that pretty much does it for all the news that are happening in and around the world. Here is some new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. We got uh, Look Before You Speak, which aired last night, but you can look out on it, look at it online at mcat.org. We also have Missoula Out and About, which uh, follows the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula. And we have a bunch of other cool things uh, happening on MCAT as well this week on Channel 189 all of the history about what wonder commas are and how they started uh, a fun one when you come in is uh, talking about old worm who was a 17th century naturalist and he kind of kicked off the whole idea of collecting in museums and wonder commas that right there is hair art and that is seven generations of montana women and the different hair arts that those generational women put together this is Abraham Lincoln's chair? Yes, yeah, so this is another fun item that we have in our uh, collection. And the story behind this chair was that this was donated to us in 1975 by Mr. Mrs. Glenn Tarbell. Um, and right now my work is pretty expansive to where I can't really see any rules between each piece. Um, maybe rules and color schemes, things like that, but as far as working, I usually just try to be really open with myself in the studio practice and just do it. Um, I feel like I'm pretty casual in the studio and I never really know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. which is kind of fun, but also really scary some days. What do you, what, what do you mean scary? What, what's frightening? Not scary <clears throat> in like a literal sense of the term. I think it's more scary that you may get to the studio and have no idea what you're going to do that day. For all these accolades, I've learned that he is a humble man and doesn't give the impression that he's at all famous. And that, of course, makes him all the more worthy of our recognition. James Lee Burke. My father, I, I want to thank also not just the group that's here this evening or afternoon, but uh, the entire city of Missoula. This is not exaggeration. This is the best place I have ever been. And I've been, I've seen a good part of the world. Uh, it's egalitarian. It's alpine. Every kind of person here. And it's filled with intelligent people of goodwill. I'm, if I leave here one day, I get homesick. That's a fact. Anyway, uh, I'd, I'd like to be humble, but let me 
tell you what my father used to say about humility. My father was the most intelligent man I ever knew. And I remember when I was about 15, I said, I, Daddy, I want to be humble about this situation. He said, Son, don't worry about being humble. Humility will find you. <laughs> Writers more and more can't afford to be there. I mean, it's it's rough there. So it used to be that I don't know, tons of writers would come and you could find you could make a life, you could make a living. And now editors and agents are finding that, you know, we're it, it's not this is not a business where we're we're sort of making money hand over fist and it's a hard city to have a life in. And and I had to make that hard choice of like, I wanna have a life, but I love this work and there are stories everywhere and it was so important to me especially I think from growing up moving around and seeing so many different places I just felt like the the way especially sort of the literary kind of world in New York was so um, looking so inwardly sometimes and I was just like it'll be good for everybody to have people sort of breaking out of that you know hey guys welcome back Let's talk about some city council. Um, last Monday night's meeting, um, many people who have just gotten their tax returns back came to the city council meeting to complain about what the city has been doing um, in terms of some of the transparency, in terms of some of the money that has been spent, in terms of the lawyer fees and legal fees for the water condemnation um, um, hearings that happened about three so year, the past three years or so. And um, yeah, let's kick things off with uh, first public comment by our f by um, uh, Vondi Kapetsky. So here's Vondi Kapetsky to complain to the city. I've just recently become aware that the city is not willing to release the financial information about the water compact relative to the legal fees that were incurred. The reason I'm concerned about that is I think all taxpayers will be concerned because we pay taxes and in doing so we pay the mayor's salary and we pay all of you a salary. And I think you owe it to the taxpayers to be transparent with what, how you spend our money because we're transparent with what we give you. All right. So. Um to help clarify some things, uh, many of the uh, comments that were uh, mentioned, there were about three comments that um, at the city council that happened on Monday, which basically were kind of repeated what she just kind of repeated as well. But of course, many of you, um, of course, uh, when Mountain Water was going to be sold to Liberty out of Canada, Missoula claimed that the Missoula had the right to put up a bid for their water company, but claims that Carlisle did not want to sell or honor an agreement that they had with Missoula to offer a chance for Missoula to buy the water company. So. The, uh, they, th so the city of Missoula formed a committee to uh, f um, form an eminent domain case, which resulted in a long and costly lawsuit with the, uh, si with the city until they won against Carlisle Group, uh, only to continue a public hearing on costs associated with buying the system, which with all three was $123 million total for the three package deals, but we only wanted the one piece of the, um, the system with uh, Park Water, which is a um, conglomerate of three different water companies which included Missoula um, Mountain Water Company as well so um, basically long long story short is that Missoula was able to get the price reduced uh, for the buying the water company and we ended up paying um, just about uh, 90 million dollars in term between um, paying for the water mountain water and the legal fees that uh, came about doing it as well. But some people wanted some of the details in terms of the lawyer fees and like what specific lawyer fees and having some more information about that. Here's John Engen with the response uh, to some of these public comments later in the meeting. The, the cost of acquisition has never been a secret and during the course of many, many public meetings and presentations we've made those, uh, we've made those costs uh, uh, very transparent and as of Today, acquisition costs are $9,163,724.54. Um, I did indeed estimate legal costs at $400,000. That was before we ended up with a remarkably adversarial 
opponent who uh, turned out lost in court but did everything they could to make those legal bills as expensive as possible for the city of Missoula. Uh, the legal bills um, have been approved by this council at a variety of council meetings over the last three years. The totals of those bills are on the claims report every council meeting and available on the website for anyone who is interested, as are all expenses incurred by the City of Missoula. So if someone wants to know what we're spending on anything, that information is available. And if somebody wants to know in particular or get some help finding that information, we're happy to provide it. All right. So... Um, I'll, uh, um, I'll show you guys exactly what website you guys should check out in case you are wondering about some of the financial implications of anything whatsoever. But I just want to give a side note saying that a lot of the, the, the money that goes into the legal fees is not from taxpayers' money. It's from the fund that they set aside, money that they've earned through the Ma Missoula Water Company. Now, especially, they have a, uh, an account set aside to do this. Um, Right now, I got uh, Brian Von Losberg, who also responds um, as well um, to some of these public comments. And to insinuate that we have been not uh, been doing that is irresponsible would be the kindest way I could characterize it, uh, and I take it quite personally. Um, the amounts that came out of those committee meetings always came directly to the claims uh, area, as the mayors described um, in our city council meetings, and we all have access to those. The public has access to those, uh, and we review those and we approve them. There's been nothing that has been hidden about those costs, and I also appreciate uh, the detailed explanation and the accurate explanation about how uh, these fees haven't raised property taxes in any way, shape, or form, their association with the revenue, uh, the, the enterprise fund associated with the water utility. Um, again, uh, I have zero problem uh, looking any constituent in the eye in this community and being uh, completely confident, again, about the city and this council's role in accountability and transparency and engage good governance. Thanks. All right. So that uh, I hope that helps cover some of this stuff as well. If you are interested in um, knowing more about this, uh, you can um, go on to ci.missoula.mt.us, a good resources for anybody who wants more information about the city of Missoula. All you got to do is Google Google city of Missoula and you get this website pretty much right up there on the link. Ignore the ads if you don't have any spam, uh, if you don't have spam block on your computer. But yeah, just look up the first website that shows up when you type in city of Missoula. All right, let's talk about some other things. Um, Mayor John Ingen, uh kicking things off with a nice little proclamation. So here is a proclamation on, um, read by our very own John Ingen. As the City of Missoula has partnered with the National Wildlife Federation to promote the creation and conservation of wildlife habitats through the Garden City, and whereas our local pollinating hummingbirds, bees, beetles, flies, moths, and butterflies are essential for maintaining healthy biodiverse ecosystems, and whereas pollination allows plants to reproduce food that form the foundation of the food chain for other species, including humans, and whereas pollination plays a vital role in the health of our forests and grasslands, which provide forage, fish and wildlife, timber, water, mineral resources, and recreational opportunities, as well as enhanced economic development opportunities for communities, and whereas the act of gardening for wildlife promotes sustainable gardening practices such as soil and water conservation, organic practices, and control of exotic species, all of which help restore healthy soil, air, and water that native pollinary pollinators rely upon. Now, therefore, I, John Ingen, Mayor of the City of Missoula and the State of Montana, do hereby proclaim the week of May 7th through 13th, 2018, as Missoula Pollinator Week. And thank All you. All right. So that was Mayor John Ingen with Missoula Pollina Pollinator Week. Um, up next, uh, th th we had a nice proclamation. But let's talk about the fiscal year 2018 budget resolution. During the fiscal year, the city identifies expenditures that would not include slash identify the original budget, but the state law requires the city council review and uh, uh, formally recognize the associated expenditures for the third quarter of 2018. Many updates include a flexible way to getting assistance from work study from the University of Montana, which works like a UM pays students to work at your place of business, basically. You'd, um, the business would pay them about two fifty an hour with the university uh, doing the overhead in terms of uh, paying the students as well to make it more of a, a um, 
uh, would, which would constitute a paying job in terms of that. And the city of Missoula is looking to expand that and also uh, work a better way to do this, especially with the uh, um, additive of the vending at Fort Missoula Regional Park. Uh, Dale Bickle talks about the other updates and other transfers of funds from this resolution because it's not just about uh, funding uh, some um, in, 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 um, um, basically temp employees. These are items that are, are, are moving how we account for certain dollars in the budget. Um, the first item was to create a separate department for the um, ongoing maintenance at Fort Missoula Regional Park in the amount of approximately 458000 um, and the other one is to um, establish our, uh, f f uh, in a separate fund, uh, $540,000 in the sewer replacement and depreciation fund. So those aren't increases um, to the bu budget. It's just, uh, it's just um, ex showing how we're accounting for them differently. All right. So that was uh, some of the things that they're doing with this. Um, the city of Missoula approved the budget um, um, because, let's see, um, so the, basically, the only thing they asked for was $4,300 that would uh, provide jobs for college students to st slash temp employees who would work, uh, who'd work study uh, the work study program through the city. Um, of course, in general comments in the city co um, city council meeting, uh, Jesse, R Jesse Ramos is concerned about John Engen's political contributions and some of the transparency issues that the city is, has as well, going back to a transparency issue. Uh, people are concerned, and not just me, but people are concerned with the fact that uh, Boone Carlberg, uh, the attorneys and their spouses have donated tremendous amounts of money to your campaign, and they were also hand-selected by you uh, for the gun ordinance case. And that is a big issue, and as you know, the Montana Constitution, Article 2, Section 9, states that uh, these bills are uh, classified under the public right to know. And uh, again, I don't understand what legal strategy uh, could possibly be revealed by just telling us what we're paying per hour and a general description of what services are performed. I mean, we've all seen, sit, uh, seen sanitized versions or declassifications of memos. Just block out anything that you might think is uh, classified because as you know, uh, folks are uh, required to uh, state their employer when they're donating to a political campaign. And the reason why they're doing this is because they don't want to see political favors exchanged or they don't want to see any sort of uh, favoritism handed out based on political contributions. And I think that that is a fair assumption um, as to why some of the folks are upset about this. And I've been told that I could see uh, the documents with an NDA. I've also been told that I am the client in these cases. And I've never gone to a doctor and had to sign an NDA to see my uh, HIPAA-protected health form. So, again, that All right, so that was uh, Jesse Ramos. Um, 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 I'm concerned about this as well. Uh, Stacey Anderson um, responds to this, and t she talks about public service in general. I've been sitting here for the past several weeks listening to this debate go on and I continue to be troubled and I finally have decided tonight to uh, voice my concerns. I was so happy to see so many people show up in the audience tonight but I was really concerned by some of the comments that they made. Myself, like all the other council members, took an oath of office to uphold the Constitution and to be good stewards of the public good. I ran for office because I still believe, despite everything, that public service is a noble endeavor and it takes takes all of us playing our part, doing what we can to make our community work. And this is the part I can play, and I take it very seriously. I'm troubled that so many people showed up today because they felt there was some sort of malfeasance happening with the public funds, and that myself and 10 other counselors were just letting this happen. I think along with upholding the Constitution, we need to work hard to maintain the public trust. I am troubled that there are those who are willing to mislead that public for personal vendetta, political gain. It doesn't take long to sow the seeds of doubt, but it takes exponentially longer to rebuild it. I want to share some facts with those who are still listening or may tune into this at some other time that hopefully can assuage some of the concerns expressed here tonight. Your property taxes do not 
let me repeat, do not go towards paying the legal bills acquiring uh, associated with the acquisition of mountain water. Every month when you and I pay our water bills, that money goes into a separate account. It's called an enterprise fund. All these like wonky things you get to learn when you get on city council. And all of that money in that enterprise accounts goes to operations, maintenance, salary, and in this case, legal fees that go for acquiring mountain water. This is not your property taxes. This is your water bills. And I have to say, I'm continually impressed with the amount of upgrades and deferred maintenance that Missoula Water is undertaking, something the previous owner neglected for decades, and all of this without raising your water rates. Okay, um, of course, uh, Stacey Anderson and many, a, c a couple of the other, Brian Van Lossberg and Mayor John Ingen went on to comment about uh, mentioning that, um, oh, I, I lost it for a second, that uh, I keep on, I I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of it exactly, of course, um, uh, darn it. You know when you have something on the tip of your tongue and you just can't say it? I'm having that moment right now. It's, it's terrible because it's really important um, that, um, of course, you know, like the, the money. Oh, right. The whole idea of uh, like the whole legal fees is that the reason why they don't want to be like every little detail of every legal fee is like what kind of research they're going to be doing about what kind of different thing. A lot of the uh, legal impl 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 darn, I'm really losing it today. But um, the whole idea of why they're not going a whole detailed report of some of the lawyers deal is because they are. Um, basically going through like a counter lawsuit against Carlisle Group and some of the things which are going as far as the Supreme Court. Um, to, so this kind of thing of uh, eminent domain and basically corporations controlling the water companies in towns in general, not just Missoula, but other towns that may have the um, future similar problems to not show their hand, basically. It's kind of like um, they, don't wa they don't want to be transparent because the, um, their transparency would um, also ha ruin their case. Um, against uh, some of the idea of this. So the whole idea is they don't want to show their hands and you don't want to have too much information. The lawyers are handling a lot of things. So the lawyer fees that are going to this is through the enterprise fund. And yeah, that's basically kind of what I wanted to say in terms of that. But I think one of the bigger, thing, um, bigger things to take away from this is that um, your water bill is going to pay the lawyer fees, which is more than enough um, to also pay for maintenance upgrades, water pumps, metering, and all sorts of upgrades to the water system, along with the uh, fees that are incurring through the lawyer fees as well. So um, all this is being taken care of without affecting property taxes or taxes in general. Um, let's move on to another topic. Uh, that was pretty much the end of the city council report by me. I'm gonna be talking about uh, Max Wave this, uh, this Friday. So today they're having a meeting during the Committee of the Whole about the Max Wave, which is being built just right next to Brennan's Wave. So Brennan Wave is the popular wave here in downtown Missoula near Cares Park off of uh, the Clark Fork River. And right next to it, they're gonna be building a Max Wave, which is gonna be a little bit bigger than the Brennan's Wave, and it's gonna be just as popular, if not more so. And it's been a, a process that's been going on for over three, four years, and maybe even more if you talk to uh, uh, Mr. Shredder himself. So um, we'll talk about that and more this uh, Friday on Wicca Missoula. But I have a new dub and stuff for you guys, so I'm going to stop talking and we're going to get uh, some more uh, uh, redubbed videos from the, the movie The Strange Love of Martha Ivers. For the last time, I'm not going to eat Duncan. Remember the last employee who found out I was a cop said? Let's do this. Do you want fresh towels, sirs? <laughs> get out of here. What do you think we're gonna find in here, partner? Lots of evidence, I say. Lots of evidence, indeed. Wait a minute. What is it, partner? Go check it out. Huh, it seems like this music gets louder the closer I get to this door. Oh. Oh, jeez. You might wanna check this out, sir. Aha! Would you look at that? All right, you get the shades. I'll get these shades too. Looks like he was planning for a long trip. <laughs> I'm up, I'm up. Oh, what? You better not forget to yawn. You'll be really tired if you don't yawn. Oh, what's going on? I, I, I'm so confused. 
Are you aware it's half past noon? Or as I like to say, noon 30? Uh, all right, all right. Here's the newest script to Game of Thrones Season 7. Oh great, we wouldn't want to have any spoilers getting out to the public now, would we? That's a lot of main character deaths. Hmm, very interesting. Would you assume that George R. R. Martin is crazy? Because this is all bogus. Hmm, this seems like a forgery. Is this true? Technically, it's a true forgery. So therefore, forgeries are true. Everybody seems to be after these notes. I can see that you could make a cool meal or two if these were to fall into the wrong hands after all. Uh, what is this? A bus station? Wait. Tony. She, she, it seems she has run out on you with the notebook. She wouldn't do that. It seems you've been bamboozled. I don't even know what that means. It means you've been sucker punched in a literary sense. Far be it for me to judge. You mean a nice girl at Hoopastank concert only to wake up the next day with vital notes that will determine the fate of our favorite characters? Well, I'm sure George R. R. Martin could uh, make more notes after all. There's a little sassy guy and the eunuch, dragons one through three. But without these notes, we'll never be able to remember who to generally kill off. Oh, wow. I, I, I don't know what to say. Your look of shock and horror should be true. Nothing spoils quite like a bit like knowing ahead of time. Sure, the nerds kept quiet about the Red Wedding, but anyone looking down the rabbit hole would have been just as disappointed. Let's get out of here, Smitty. Well, if Tony ever comes back, be sure to call us. No, wait. I think I can help you. Huh, interesting. Tony eats breakfast at Duncan. It all comes back to Duncan. Ah, oh, jeez, I can't believe I had to go back to Duncan. I hate Duncan. Make sure we hide our badges. I don't want that jerk employee to... Uh, uh, whatever. Huh? What's this? Huh. Looks like he's getting into more trouble than I am. <laughs> Good news for me. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about uh, some things that are happening in Missoula. You like things that happen in Missoula? Because things are happening in Missoula. Not just the uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics, and Ro Roots Acro Sports Center starting um, 9.30 around now until about noon today. They also are having a developmental and preschool screening um, at 9 a.m. This happens from 9 a.m. to about noon today, so it's happening right now. It's a free development preschool screen clinic for kids aged 0 to 5 at Forsealy Lake and Swan Valley School Districts, which will be held um, today um, at Sealy Lake High School. Uh, six seven seven two two six five for more information to schedule an appointment with your child's screening or to receive more information. This free screening includes a uh, gross motor, fine motor, language concepts, communication concepts, communication skills, hearing and vision screening. So this is happening there um, until about noon today, um, and that's all in the way in the Sealy Lake area. Art. In the moment, Missouri Art Museum starting at 10 a.m. today is this a new program that provides a friendly art viewing and art making experience for those in the early stages of dementia and their caregivers. Based on the Museum of Modern Arts Meet, the Pro Meet Me program, Art in the Moment creates a dementia friendly learning community and provides an opportunity for caregivers and those with dementia to be together in a creative and relaxed environment. Participants will view and discuss the works of art uh, with a trained art guide, then move to the classroom for a hands-on art activity. And this is Wednesdays starting today, and it's from 10 a.m. to noon, and this is a thing that they're hopefully getting things to get um, started for people living with dementia and Alzheimer's. So to call them, it's 728-0447, area code 406. You know, if you're in Montana, it's always 406, so... The number is 728-0447, and it's limited to 12 participants per session. Empower Place Tiny Tales is happening 10.30 a.m., so if you're going to the Missoula Food Bank today and you want your kid to pick up a book and learn some reading and maybe a nice little cookbook along the way, um, Empower Place is the place to be for Tiny Tales. Um, 11 a.m., Spectrum Discovery opens up, and they feature scientists every day and will showcase activities related to their field. The scientist day is Alexander Von Humboldt, and this is uh, from Wednesday from 2.30 to 5.30. They will have a special making activity, and they're doing bouncy rockets. Um, Scrabble and Bridge, 12.30ish, um, happening at the Missoula Senior Center, so you can play some Scrabble, you can play some Bridge, you can play a little bit of both, or you can just hang out at the best dance floor in the city of Missoula, the Missoula Senior Center, starting at 12.30.
Missoula Public Library Memory Cafe. Missoula Public Library introduced a new program based on the Memory Cafe model um, uh, currently being used internationally. The goal of the Missoula Public Library Memory Cafe is to create a safe, welcome, and supportive space for individuals experiencing memory loss and their caregivers and family members. The program will take place every second Wednesday of each month in the early afternoon. And this one starts at 2 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. Middle School Writers Group is also the Missoula Public Library starting at 3.30 p.m. If you're a kid who's struggling with writing or wants to improve their creative writing skills, Missoula Public Library has a Middle School Writers Group every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m., but then there's always a Teen Writers Group every Friday at 3.30 p.m. Class Fusion Orientation class is starting tonight at 6 p.m. The Newtown Arts Community Center is doing Fusion. It, it created our world, and you can learn how to do it. Uh, take our glass fusing orientation. This introductory class covers all the basics, and it's from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Zootown Arts Community Center. And then again, this is uh, the first day of the rest of the running of MCT's Disney's The Little Mermaid. MCT is putting on their last show of the 2017-2018 season. Um, all shows are at 7.30 p.m. every single night, except for Sunday, which is at 6.30 p.m. with matinees at 2 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Joe Martinez was on my show to talk about this last Friday. Uh, thanks again for uh, joining me on that as well. So if you guys are interested in that, you can do that. But of course, a comedian's coming to town. If you like Hannibal Buress, uh, he's going to be at the Wilma at 8 p.m. tonight. You got trivia at the Press Box. You got trivia at Silver Slipper at 7.30. Uh, rock and Karaoke. It's starting at 9 p.m. at the Dark Horse. And, of course, you got craft as a karaoke at the Band Loader starting at 10. Uh, I have an art clip for you guys, and this is the last time you guys will go to check out this art from, let's see, the, uh, the Gallery of the, the, the G of GVA, or the Gallery of the Visual Arts, and this is BFA Senior Thesis exhibi Exhibition, and it ends tomorrow. So you have until tomorrow to check this out. Um, and then, when, um, But I'm going to talk to you guys about your... Uh, tomorrow events um, after this art clip by our very own Rick Phillips. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about things that are happening for your Thursday, May 10th. It is not Thursday, May 10th, but let me talk about some of the events that you guys can enjoy starting Thursday. Family Fun Time at the YMCA is happening 9.30 a.m. starting your Thursday off right with some indoor fun, um, education, swimming pools, track, basketball, games, all sorts of fun things happen at the YMCA, 9.30 tomorrow morning. Uh, Tiny Tales at M Missoula Public Library is starting at 10.30 a.m. Today it's going to happen at um, Missoula Food Bank, but tomorrow it's going to happen at Missoula Public Library. Tiny Tales is pretty much happening uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and of course they might have like a Saturday and Sunday one too as well, but Tiny Tales is a good way for your kid to get experience with the books one or many of these days. Excel. You want to excel? Well, 
This is not that Excel. Microsoft Excel class is an introductory, introductory to the basic features of Microsoft Excel, a spreadsheet program designed for Windows in environment. Topics will include entering data and formulas and instructions ass uh, assumes the students have some experience with Windows and using a mouse. I guess they <laughs> had so many experiences with people being like, what do I do with this thing? And, and then they're just like, we just don't want to go through the whole process of helping you like literally click on something. So the whole idea is that you have to know how to use a computer and not know how to use Excel to basically go to this class. And that happens at noon tomorrow. Um, make it and take it craft at Big Sky Branch. Big Sky Branch has a craft making um, thing every single Thursday at 2.30 right after school. School gets out at like at 2. So at 2.30 is a perfect place to do it. It's 728-2400 um, with extension 8605. The 728-2400 is the um, MCPS in Missoula County Public Schools um, main um, phone number, but their extension is 8605. Missoula Microscope Exploration. Microscope, no, Microscope Exploration is going to be at the Missoula Insectarium starting at 3 p.m. They also have a predator feeding at 3.30 p.m., but of course, this day they will bring a look in different relationships bugs have with plants up close. They will be diving into the microscope, um, looking at herbivore mouth parts, uh, pollen uh, basics of bees, and the camouflaging designs of praying mantises. Insects interact and with plants in many ways, whether it's to eat, forage, build homes, or hide. Come join them as they learn more about this fancying co-evolution. And again, Lego Club, every Thursday at 3.30 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. Learn about bugs right next door at the Missoula Insectarium or just go down the street to the Missoula Public Library and, and place it with some Legos and create. Uh, Clean Eating 101, Dickinson's Lifelong Learning Center. There are many um, educational events happening Thursday night as well, but this is just one of many. And this is the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center is Clean Eating 101, a whole f uh, food plant-based diet has been scientifically proven to help people achieve ideal weight and prevent and reverse many chronic diseases, including heart disease, cancer, diabetes, uh, neurological diseases, stroke, arthritis, and more. This class will review how to simply make by making beneficial food choices, and they'll have immense power as individuals to prevent and reverse chronic disease and live longer, more vibrant lives. Um, Media Arts Spring Expo. The Roxy is hosting the School of Media Arts at the University of Montana presents the Spring Expo. As much as the Gallery of the Visual Arts uh, shows the BFA program artists, this one shows the Media Arts nerds over from the uh, University of Montana. This event is free and open to the public and will showcase students' works at uh, that are a com culmination of their 2017-2018 school year, and it's happening Wednesday, Mar uh, May 9th, which will highlight the interactive media and live performance installation presented beginning at 7 p.m., and then also tomorrow night at, um, will feature a film, animation, and ex uh, experimental cinema experience that will surprise and delight beginning at 7 p.m. Come in, intrigue your sense of experience and tremendous talent coming out of Missoula's media art department. And I think that'd be cool. You can check it out. Um, but also, if you're interested in going out afterwards, here are some of the things that you guys can do. It's the worst feelings and friends. It's going to be country music at the Western Cider at 8 p.m. Disney's Little Mermaid, 7.30 p.m. Great. Um, Missoula Open Decks DJ Party is at VFW. Rock and Karaoke is at Dark, Dark Horse. And then, of course, uh, Zozo, celebrating 50 years of Led Zeppelin, will be playing at Top Hat Lounge Thursday, May 10th. So those are some of your events that are happening. If you're interested in learning about more events and see what's happening in the city of Missoula, go to MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's going on in Missoula? This. Just look at this. And stop asking me. MissoulaEvents.net. It is your local resources for everything Missoula and what's happening in Missoula. And of course, uh, I'm excited. Uh, if you guys didn't get a chance to go to the uh, farmer's market on Saturday, it is up in a full swing. There, might be not, there may not be that many options in terms of vegetables and, and fruit compared to midsummer, but you can expect to see a lot of uh, plants and uh, starter plants for a lot of people who want to start gardening as soon as possible. But also, they have a lot of food vendors and a lot of uh, drink carts, a lot of uh, interactive booths to get involved with, and a lot of street performance there. So I suggest if you guys are going out and about this weekend, you uh, don't, go out, don't go out too hard on a Friday night and enjoy some farmer's market fun on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to about 1 p.m. So there's that. And that's pretty much about it for me here on MCAT.
But if you want to learn more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. Or you can just Google me. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, MCAT.org, your local resources for everything MCAT in terms of learning about um, what's on our channels. Or we're PEG Station, which is a public, educational, and government station. We have orientation every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. You can inquire by calling 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. Please take our survey. It's on our webpage. Click on the cat, and it'll bring you to a nice little survey page. SurveyMonkey.com. Use through the City of Missoula and Missoula Community Resource. You go through here, and you learn all about MCAT and more. But of course, summer camps are in full swing. They're filling up. We got a zombie camp, we got two animation camps, and we got a time travelers camp. A brand new camp that we're offering this year is time travelers camp. We're partnering up with the historic museum at Fort Missoula to teach kids about history while also making nice cool little documentary films about um, the history of Missoula or the history of people who have been and through Missoula. So you can learn about that and more by going on to mcat.org. But without further ado, this is the end of the show. I'm Scott Ramp, and I will see you Friday with uh, your Max Wave report uh, and more this Friday. Thank you, and goodbye. Mm -hmm.